Hello, this is Janet Gallen, welcoming you to Love Letters Live. And today's guest is really one of the <laughs> funniest men I know. I'm choking you up already. <laughs> well, stay tuned because I, I can't say enough good about you. I'm gonna tell you it's Terry Ray and I've known Terry for a long time. And because of pandemic and, you know, we're all kind of trapped, um, I haven't been able to see him. And then it occurred to me, we could do this. So Terry, go to you and you tell us hello and what you do. Hello. What, first of all, I'm just gonna say that you're one of my favorite people on the planet. You're so sweet and amazing and, and supportive and Aww. all kinds of really, really good adjectives. That's you, lots Thank of adjectives. You. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what I do is I'm an actor and a writer and um, kind of a producer too, I guess now. So um, I kind of do my own, sh my, own, my own shows and my own stuff, so. Do you want to tell us just before we start in on what I know I think today's topics are going to be, tell us about Electricity, your play. I love to talk about Electricity. Okay. That's a play that I wrote uh, that I've been performing for three years until COVID, you know, put all theater into a coma, which right. we're hoping that we'll wake up soon. But uh, it's a play about two guys who meet after their 10th high school reunion in 1983, small town, Ohio. They were so closeted in high school. Uh, but now at this reunion, they wind up sharing a hotel room. One of them so repressed, he pretends like he has a wife and the other one is just blatantly out. And they have a love connection that brings them back to that same hotel room every 10 years for each reunion. So you see them for four decades and you see how they, they change and the world changes and it's funny and it's sexy and it's powerful and sad. It's got all kinds of good stuff going on. Well, this takes, I, I was unaware of this. I mean, I've kind of been following it, but I didn't know it took place over four decades. Yes, yes. Wow. And it's all in the same hotel room and we've been doing it a couple of different ways, but one way we've been doing it is immersively inside a hotel room with the audience in the room with us and we just act all around them. Sounds so, wonderful. Pretty cool. Yes. Is that going to be <clears throat> something we can stream eventually? Well, I'd love to see it. Ask, you should ask because uh, today, this right as soon as we're done here, I am going to go see the final edited version of it because we were going to live stream it, COVID, bleh, so we couldn't do it safely. So we decided just to film it one time because ongoing would be hard. And um, so I get to see the edited version right now. So we're figuring out what we're going to do with that. And um, you know, we were, were we were headed off Broadway before this all happened, so yeah. we're going to get back on track for all of that. But we've become the longest running play in Palm Springs because we were playing in the hotel room and the theater for three years. I am so happy that I just asked right now. <laughs> yeah. well, look what if I, you ask me electricity, you're going to get an electrifyingly earful you know, answer. You know, I'm, I'm so happy to say that sometimes by just being kind of a pest and asking <laughs> questions, I get wonderful information. So mm. let's talk about <laughs> what brought us together or what made me want to get a hold of you for love letters. Today. Yes. I saw a picture of you with Ed Asner. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what I went to right away is that one of my most favorite television shows has always been the Mary Tyler Moore show. Amen. That is one of my absolute, I think it's my favorite. Okay. okay, so let's talk. I've got a couple more, but let's talk about that because um, it just happens, and this kind of kicked a memory in for me, that at some point when I was single as an uh -huh. adult in my 40s, I um, <coughs> excuse me, worked in an, an environment where I was the only, at times, the only woman there surrounded by man there was one other woman and my children my daughters saw me as the mary tyler moore of that that is not <laughs> a bad thing <laughs> not That's a not a bad thing excuse me and they wanted me to marry ed asner <laughs> i was single i don't know if he was but my children were my daughters were quite convinced that i should be married to ed asner oh so when i saw that picture it just brought back now i watched the reruns every day, every morning at 11 o'clock, they are on my television, but I get them on Hulu. So, uh -huh. I, you know, every night I treat myself. Why is it your favorite? Um, I just think it's the characters I, 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 and the actors. I, I, I think everybody that was on that show was absolutely brilliant. And most of them are legend. 
I mean, let's let's face it. There's Betty White and there's Cloris Leachman and there's Maritana Moore, and um, they had multiple successes as you know huge sitcom stars. And yeah. um, I, think, I, I think Mary Tyler Moore really rose to shine. There, there is nobody that does embarrassed awkward better. Yeah, and that's not easy to pull off. Comfortable. Just brilliant at that. Yes. And yeah. then everybody thought that Betty White was this sex kitten until she did the absolute opposite role on Golden Girls. Like, you know, she, she they well, offered her the, the, the sexy one, but she's like, no, I want to play the, the naive, innocent one, which was complete opposite of what she did on Maritime War Show. Well, I get, I get confused by characters in real life because um, I very often, yes, I believe that what I see on the screen is reality. <laughs> too often which you know leads me to some of my favorites but don't watch horror movies you'll never get over it oh you know i tend not to because i saw a rerun recently of the twilight zone yeah i've been watching the twilight zone that's what i've I been been watch it, it I, I was so terrified and the same with the old alfred hitchcock oh. i can't watch that i have been watching twilight zone just to see and they're they're fun they're each one's a, like a little mini play you know i know that scares the living daylights out of me <laughs> So let me ask you. But, fun. Yeah. Let me ask you, but how you feel about how the Mary Tyler Moore show evolved? I think that I think the pilot was just great, um, and and really set the tone. But what do you think of? I mean, not Ed Adner, Asner's fault, but Mr. Grant as a character. He was a mean son of a bitch. He was an abusive drunk. You don't see that. You know what? I don't think of him as mean. I think of him as a curmudgeon and um, and with a heart because he really cared about people. See, I so, couldn't see that part. Yeah. Oh, once in a while I did, once in a while. But I wonder if today, if they were making that show, they could get away with the kind of curmudgeonry you're talking about. He was brutal with Ted. Yeah, well, the Ted was the one, but everybody else, he had, a, but, but he still had a heart for Ted, but. Okay. Yeah. But, um, and also I forgot to mention how brilliant Valerie Harper was. I mean, like- Oh, yes. Brilliant. And gorgeous. And gorgeous. So, oh. and, you know, how she managed to play the role, and this is again, you know, the, I, I guess a tribute to a good actor. She managed to play the role of somebody who was a plain Jane. And she was beautiful. So gorgeous. Oh, yeah. and- and what a fine actress. Oh my gosh, I got to see her on stage several times. And mm -hmm. she is a, she was a brilliant, brilliant actress, really was. I'm not surprised. And Cloris Leachman, can we talk about the clothes? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Cloris I, Leachman's wardrobe. There was never a time that she didn't walk on stage that I didn't want that outfit. Yeah, the hair, the, uh -huh. the scarves, the every, yeah, she, she was, Oh gosh, can I tell you a super quick Cloris Leachman story? Tell me a long, slow one, it's just as good. Okay, when I was like 15, 16. I, um, there was this theater that came through Columbus where I was living, you know, near Columbus. And um, it had a different TV star in the show each week. And I couldn't afford to go to the theater. And I, but I treated myself one time and, and I saw these reporters like going for free, like, cause they had gone and interviewed them and I'm like, what if I pretend to be a reporter? Now, I'm only 18 years old. And so I went and I said, I'm here with my school paper. And um, it was for Ann Miller and they let me in and I interviewed Ann Miller and I got free tickets to the show. And I'm like, what? This is really good. So I did that every, every week, every <laughs> summer until Cloris Leachman. So, so Cloris Leachman she didn't want to do the interview at the ho at the at the um, theater. She said uh, she wanted people to go to the ho her hotel room, and I was the young kid, and they were listening. You know, it's like you go first. You go early in the morning. You go first. So, and I was supposed to be in there for five minutes. So I I I, I am so like starstruck, and um, I loved Cloris Leachman. And her door was open a little bit, and I didn't know what to do. And I kind of knocked, and I heard her talking, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. So then I kind of peeked my head in, and I'm like, she says, Come on in. And uh, she's on the phone and I'm like, she's in bed, in bed, hasn't gotten up yet, talking to Dinah. And I'm like, she's talking to Dinah Shore and I'm about to die, okay? So I'm sitting on her sofa and literally she says, um, Dinah, hang on a second. Uh, honey, I'm a person. 
<laughs> I was staring at her so much. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll put my jaw back up. And um, it, 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 she's talking and, and then she gets off the phone and she's like, not ready. And people are knocking and they're like, whatever, whatever. So I'm in there. She's like, help me pick out what I'm going to wear. And then, um, and then so she's getting ready. I, I see her naked butt. I'm like, oh my God. But um, her son, who was so sweet and he died a few years later. I remember that. Awful. Yeah he was in the room next to her and he brought her over breakfast and she was like, well, what about Terry? So they split their their meal, their breakfast between the three of us. People were knocking the door, Miss Leachman, you have these people waiting. And she's like, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. And everybody in the hallway who are the real people are like, what's that kid doing? <laughs> Boiling all of our time. And then, she, you know, it was two hours. It was a good two hours of this. And, um, and then finally, everybody's time had expired. They were all in the hall with TV cameras, the local news. She said, okay, everybody can come in at once. And she <laughs> sat on the sofa and put her arm around me so they couldn't cut me out of the shot and did the interview with her arm around me. And <laughs> that's after that, everybody was so mad at me, they never let me go to another one. But <laughs> I had- So a, she, is really, not only, she is not only really just a person, she's a wonderful person. She was a wonderful person. And Dinah was not Dinah Shore. Dinah was her daughter, which I didn't oh. know. And then, <laughs> so then I'm doing a play with Dinah's best friend and Dinah comes and it's like, oh, that's Corsley Flynn's daughter. Years later in LA. So I tell Dinah the story and she came to the play a few times and she said, I talked to my mom and she remembers you. And so later I got to, I got to go to Cloris's house and stuff. And, um, and so I just had this amazing, her. yeah and she like I remember like I was just this awkward teenager and she was in I was in the hotel room she like straightened at my back and she said just don't slouch stop <laughs> slouching uh, and she didn't want to talk about anything it's like like you'd ask her about the uh, uh, Mary Tyler Moore show she's like, I don't want to talk about that uh, that's the past and so it's like you, you couldn't get her I'm like I didn't prepare anything so she was just like she's so in the moment she's so that's she's wonderful now she's still with us, right? She is. She oh, is. She's in her nineties, and she's she's. Oh, I just love Cloris. I mean, she's a character for yeah. sure. Yeah. I if you go on YouTube, you guys, if anybody's watching, want to do this. If you go, Cloris Leachman, Gator Gun, which is a toy that I, I, I we created, come from a movie that I'm in. Cloris Leachman, Gator Gun, Terry Ray. You will see Cloris and I in her bed where I zap her with the gaydar gun and she's just cantankerous as all get out. It's, it's okay, really- Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go look for that, yes. <laughs> now, you know, these people, I don't know how you feel about it, but these people, I consider part of my family. I mean, they're in my living room and bedroom and den every day, they are in my house. I know. So I know. obviously, I, you know, when, oh, when Mary Tyler Moore died, mm. I pretty much got condolence letters from my daughter. I mean, when yeah. somebody, when somebody has been such a part of your life is suddenly gone and then you realize well they're not really gone well I, that's true that's a good way to look at it because they have given us this gift of this this legacy of, of of laughter or whatever they did that we get to we get to hold and i and i and i so cherish that yes do you know the the tv therapy show i do do you know about that i remind me okay so because I love classic television. So I have this- You know, I, if I'm saying remind me then I don't know about it because I wouldn't forget <laughs> anything about you. Go ahead. So I have, um, to honor classic TV, I have come up with this concept which we could do during COVID where it's called TV therapy. And I play a therapist and I have a different classic television character played oh. by that original actor in therapy now, as they would be now. Like the first one I did was Tabitha from Bewitched. Wait, and so you are, you actually got the actress Tabitha to do this with you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so they're all the original actors playing oh, their okay. character as like, so it would be like, okay, if, Tara, if Tabitha growing up with Darren and Samantha Stevens was in therapy today, that's what the show is like. And so I got to do one with her. So if you go to TV therapy, go with Tabitha, or I did one with Don Wells, uh, Marianne in therapy and I, yeah. uh, did Eddie Monster from the Monsters, and uh, oh, this is delicious! I'm going to go look for all of this. How oh yeah, they're really oh. fun. They're really fun. And uh, Kathy Garver from uh, uh, Family Affair, and uh, I, I did Porky Pig. Uh, <laughs> How'd you do that? 
the voice of the guy who does the voice of Porky Pig. Oh. To me, he just seemed like a person who thought he was a pig. So, you know, I my, my the therapist thinks everybody's a little bit crazy because they're all have these weird issues. And so I just wrote a script and I'm hoping that they like uh, will say they, they're really interested. So I, uh, for Timmy from uh, Lassie, um, you know, Jeff, yeah. Provost, Jeff Provost, little Timmy from Lassie. Little Timmy, yes. Yeah. So that's hopefully my next one, but I, I'm doing these and I'm I'm loving it, and I, so I get to You're really, busy. yeah, I get to really explore this classic television stuff and and have fun with it. And you know, I I thought you were gonna well, two things, well, 150 things, but you know, <laughs> two things is that yes, my daughter long ago with her friend Robert Strong did a three week theatrical presentation, conversations with um, the great comics. Oh, wow. I'll send you a link to that. It was wonderful. Yeah. And I thought you were going to do, I thought, you know, Carol Channing, just a whole bunch of wonderful people. So I thought when you were talking about TV therapy, that you were doing a TV therapy show with you as the therapist and audience members such as myself, <laughs> as clients, and how we have been either helped or saddened or any kind of reaction to the shows that they're in. That's a good concept too. You know, yeah. Like, like, you know, how Cheers, for example, another favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. um, just what these shows mean to me and what they leave me with. And some of it, you know, is funny and some of it's probably not so easy to share. But anyway, that's what I thought you were doing. That's what I thought you meant. What what other shows do you love? Are you watching more TV now that you're home? Yes, I think we all are. Uh, but I'm watching stuff. I, I'm watching, you know, new stuff, uh, which I love, seem to love the British stuff. I like, you know, The Crown. Do you watch, have you watched The Crown? You know, I, I hate to say this. I'm going to get hate letters. I don't relate to it. I don't. Now, I happen to really like and am interested in Queen Elizabeth. Uh-huh. I think she's great and I think she's been through a lot and that whole, but the rest of them just leave me cold. I don't find them interesting. Wow, I love it. I love all that Everybody stuff. Everybody does. I'm totally alone in the corner here. <laughs> and I tried, I tried it like three times and everything about Queen Elizabeth, oh, and her sister. I mean, there's some real, some real things going on. Um, but you know, I, I don't find a don't dynamic find that we don't know very well. It's like it's like that whole being born royal. There's that dynamic that you don't you don't really think about how how much a burden that could be. Yeah. Well, yes, how much a burden and how much a privilege of to both. And how yeah. much a safety until you do things to irritate the masses and then they break it, like you know Marie Antoinette. Right. You know. Right. Um, but yes. Have you seen Schitt's Creek? Oh, I want to move there. Isn't it the best? I, I love that show. Yes. yes. I, you know, I didn't know what it was. And I'm always late to every TV party. It was, <laughs> I am. But you're loyal once you get there. Oh, I'm obsessive <laughs> once I get there. So I didn't know what it was. And I'd see it, you know, in the scroll down. And I don't know, one day I kind of <clears throat> got up by accident. And I didn't leave the room for days. Yes. And it oh, gets first better. Of all, that day, that day that, you know, Jean, Eugene Levy's son. Oh. Daniel, I'm in love with him. I, I, I just think he's amazing. He's just he amazing. is, he is so exquisite in every way. Every, and the, everybody and the, in that part so of accepting the town is the the people of the town are all so accepting. Nobody is like judging anybody about anything. I know it's the best place in the world. I, I mean, I would move there if those people actually would move there. And you would move there, and my children would. Move. So, We'd all live in the hotel. Yeah, yeah no. happily, and yeah. you know if you can. Judge from from what's her name. There's plenty of place to keep your wardrobe and your perfume, and you don't have to really do with it. Just hang oh. those wigs on the wall. That that'll work. Something. So <laughs> another one that I came across accidentally. What? Because it seems so goofy. Was Jane the Virgin? I have not seen Jane the Virgin. Oh, heaven on earth. Yeah. Just accidentally, and everybody in that is so wonderful. And oh, it, it's another, I didn't, it's like five seasons or something. Yeah. The only thing wrong it. with it was that it ended. <laughs> Fabulous. And a lot of it's in Spanish, which, and for some reason, you know, 
people, I mean, I, when people speak Spanish, whatever their native language is, they speak so quickly. Yes. But for some reason, this was all understandable. Really? They're Spanish. Yeah. Huh. That's my problem. I used to speak Spanish. I was an exchange student, but I, they, you know, people talk so fast. I don't try anymore. But when they talk slow, I can get, I can usually. Oh, I know. I, in all the languages that I've learned, I know how to say, excuse me, there's a problem for (laughs) me. I need three words per minute. (laughs) And then I say, no, it's not a joke. Don't laugh. Yeah. And gesture a lot because that helps. (laughs) Yes. 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 So television is just such a godsend. Yeah. I mean, like, okay, from the 60s, name me, give me a show from the 60s that you loved. Oh, what was in the 60s? Give me a hint. I can't even remember the 60s. Well, for me, it would be like the Dick Van Dyke show or. Um, oh, sure. Or, I know it's it's not highbrow, but Beverly Hillbillies. I thought, you know, Granny made me laugh. Yeah. You know, I think I, <coughs> I was busy in the 60s. Oh, actually, yeah, I didn't watch much television. Mm hmm. You know, that was a pleasure that came later. But, you know, all these shows like Mary Tyler Moore, Cheers, and Frasier, because I love Roz. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They're like my lullaby. Not that they put me to sleep, quite the contrary. But somehow I feel the world is okay when Lilith shows up. (laughs) Oh, and I love Sex and the City. I was late to that one, too. Oh, yeah. Years late. Yeah, I was late to that too because I didn't have HBO. But yes, yeah, it's it's brilliant. It, it, you know, all these things don't sound interesting to me right away, and then I accidentally stumble into the and love it. I know it's 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 hard to be on the cutting edge until you hear people talk about it and you go, okay, I'm going to give in. I'm going to watch it. I know it's ten years late, but let's see. <laughs> yeah, but it's still good. And, and you know, they're brilliant. Some of these shows, like Mad Men. Oh, Mad Men is fantastic. I was 10 years late for that one too. It, I didn't even know what it referred to, Madison Avenue. But <laughs> but in a way, it's good to be late because then you can you can binge because when you're on time with those old ones, you have to remember what happened. It's like, oh my gosh, it was and a you year also ago. have to wait a week. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I'm like such an instant gratification person. Waiting a week just does not. It's hard to go to bed when you're like totally like if I was watching Shit's Creek, I'd be like, I can watch one more. I can I can stay up till 1.30. And I then at 1.30, I'm like, do I want to stay you up? realize you haven't brushed your teeth in two days and your hair is just matted down. And yes. Well, my hair doesn't get matted down. Oh, that's but. true. <laughs> oh, so let me ask you something. I know we're about love letters here. And I know that when you did your first love letters live with me so many years ago, that you had a wonderful story to tell about love letters. But have you ever written a fan letter? Yes. I did. I wrote, do you know who Christopher Durang is? Remind me, no. He's a playwright and he wrote some funny, funny stuff. And I just, I, um, you know, love theater. And he was, he was in a theater in LA and I'm like, I am actually going to write this man a, a, a letter because um, um, I love him. And he wrote me back a couple times. And then, oh, you know who else I wrote? Jimmy Stewart. Good for you. I was at an event where Jimmy Stewart was at and I couldn't speak. I, I, I was standing next to him. I couldn't get a word out of my mouth. I loved him so much. I couldn't say anything to him. So I went home and I wrote him a letter and I said, this is how much you mean to me. I couldn't speak when I was standing next to you. And he wrote me back. Oh, you know, I find I've written a couple and gotten answers back. And I think sometimes people don't bother sending high compliments to people of celebrity (laughs) because I don't know but you know this is like the old joke about um the the most beautiful girl in the class not having a date to the prom because he was afraid to ask her and figured she was already going and she ended up with nothing yes oh that's really nice I think fan letters are great I wrote one to Al Franken oh did you when he was senator before before and Mm -hmm. You know, the Al, the Al Franken stories, he used to just crack me up when he was on Saturday Night Live. And oh, that face, that handsome face and that black curly hair and, and that smile. <laughs> and he went into the studio. How did you get it to him? I went online and found a place to send, you know, I, I don't know that he got it, but he was instrumental 
in helping me raise my daughters to be two very grounded human beings. So he used to get on, this was like 40 years ago, whenever Saturday Night Live first started, I don't even know. And he got on. And at that point, there were you could buy a Krugerrand. You remember the Krugerrand days? Oh, you're too young to remember this. Okay, I forgot. And a Cougar, Cougar Rand? A, a Kruger Rand. You could buy a Kruger Rand from like Australia or something. They were trying to raise. So that was kind of a funny thing. And he got on there and I forget what the lead up was, but he ended up every time saying, and you can buy, you know, for $14, you could buy a Kruger Rand with a picture of me, Al Franken on it. And I just <laughs> lost it every time. Because self-absorption is one of the funniest <laughs> things. It, is. So, <clears throat> it turned out that I started using that when somebody, you know, one of my daughters would get a little bit too much me as the center. And I'd say, oh yeah, you, Al Franken. <laughs> get a picture of you, Al Franken. Okay. So well, I bet he would have loved it if he got that letter. Well, I don't, maybe. So every time somebody, including me, would get a little too much, this is my story, so one of the others of the three of us would say, oh yeah, you, Al Franken, center of the universe. <laughs> and it became such a be careful. Anyway, I wrote a, a love letter to thank you, to thank him for this. That is so cool. Because I thought it was important for him to know what an important role he played in my raising my children. Well, I think that he would have loved that. I hope so. Yeah. You Have you received a, a, a fan letter? I have. Yeah. I have. And you also, I'm sure. Yeah, but they mean so much. It's so it's so and, lovely. Well, so, and sometimes I got one from a woman who knew me when we were in college. She was still in school. I was a probation officer, Alameda County. And, you know, it's just normal life. Mm -hmm. And she wrote to me years later, thanking me for having been so enthusiastic about what I did. And it made her want to be one too. And she, she became the chief PO of, Brooklyn or something. Wow. And she bothered to sit down and thank me for that. You see, you just, you just never know who, you can have low self-esteem about what you're doing and but you don't know that other people think that you're doing something brilliantly. Because you don't know who's watching what. Right, right. It's a it's good thing. thing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna write you one, okay. Oh, you got, okay, so you got the magic wand, right? Yes. Yes. You have it, you know, I, I don't have mine right in front of me, but oh, yes. So in answer, love letters, to <clears throat> people so often say, I wish I had a magic wand. And my answer is you do, you got that one. Uh huh. Right at your fingertips. I think it's brilliant. And that magic wand, even Glinda needed a new one every once in a while, you know. Or, you know, put the, change the batteries, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, you, I'm gonna, I need to write one right now because you just talked about the homecoming queen. My homecoming queen is, was a gorgeous girl who, who didn't care about being a gorgeous girl. And for, for the prom, she went to see me in a play instead. And she's right now, she's got cancer and I'm going to write her a letter oh, say, I love oh. you, and I'm thinking about you. Oh, you said for the prom, she did what? She didn't go. She went to my play. I was in a play. Oh, you know, I didn't go to mine either my senior prom. I just didn't know who to ask the whole thing. It just didn't seem like an event that would grab me. You know, if I didn't care for the royal family, how am I going to like this? So <laughs> right. I didn't go, but a friend of mine asked me to go see Mort Saul that night. At the past oh, that's of better. 1959. You bet it was. And um, I, so I, I went 50 years later at one of these things, you know, these productions that my daughter and Robert Strong did. Uh -huh. Mort Saul in the audience. So I marched up to him and I introduced myself and I said, you know, you owe me a dance. <laughs> I told him and that. what did he say? Well, he wouldn't dance with me, but he was very gracious. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, I'm so glad you did this with me. Thank you, honey. Oh, it was always, it's always fun to chat with you anytime. Television. Television. Really. I mean, seriously, there's nothing better than, um, and I just want to take one quick second because yeah. A dear friend of mine, Don Wells, passed away. I know. Uh, and um, and you know, Marianne from Gilligan's Island, and um, it was such a, a it, it was such a thing to like grow up with 
you know, this kid who wanted to be an actor and, and, and this show that you would watch every day when you come from school and go, wow, you know, like, the, and then to meet one of those people and literally become very good friends with them. It's, it's, a, it's a weird, wonderful, rewarding journey. And I, Dawn was an amazing person. And I just, I, it took her passing was very hard on me. And I just wanted oh, to say, sure. love her. And, um, and uh, she loved her fans. And so it, it's just like classic TV people out there, those stars, we love them. <laughs> I have a question. Does she have children? She did not. And she, okay. she would always, every time I'd go over to her house, she'd say, she'd say, you better put your name on something because I, I yeah. <laughs> you know, there's okay. something, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering how you feel about this. And then I will let you go and I won't nag oh, you anymore. I want to show you that, see that mirror with all the different weird shapes. Yes, yes. Don gave me that. Oh, well, you know, what about, what about just for the fun of it? And, you know, you're so much a part of film history and a lot of things. And your own history and I think people people's stories are worth telling mm -hmm. what if you wrote love letters like to Dawn and you say dear Dawn I'm writing this to you and whatever it is and then you just address it to yourself mm -hmm. and you let it sit there and someday somebody will find these letters that you've written and know it's that they are yeah it's a it's a good idea I I, I, I know was, you're busy yeah. but yeah, it, it was, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting relationship I had with her, a rewarding, rewarding relationship. And um, she was, she was pretty awesome. So, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, honey. Let's, let's do this again on some other topic someday. Absolutely. And it's time. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to wait till you let me know that I can stream electricity. I really do want to see it. Yes, yes, we will figure, I mean, uh, we're going to figure out how that's going to work out. Okay, thank you, honey. I'm going to okay, love you. I love you too. Bye. Bye.